Well, hello everyone and welcome. We're really glad to see so many of you able to join us today. And uh, we look forward to a really great uh, conversation with all of you. There has been a, a lot going on here in COSA for this past year. And uh, we're going to try to cover all of it within the short space of an hour. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, what we're going to cover. And uh, you know you know that old adage, I'll tell them what you're going to tell them and then tell them. So we're going to have, uh, obviously, just a little bit of a summary from me about what's been going on this past year. Um, and then our various committees are going to report so that you all get a better sense of where COSA as an organization is and where some of our great activities are occurring. Uh, the Finance Committee, of course, will report on the state of our finances as an organization. And the Development Committee follows right on the heels of that to talk about the great support that we've received and the hard work that they're doing to continue to keep our finances in great shape. Education and training is a centerpiece of what we do. Um, and we'll hear from Sean about the Education and Training Committee's work. Advocacy is another critical activity that we do. And we'll hear uh, a bit about, I think Jody is going to report on what the status of our advocacy efforts are. Um, and Sarah Kuntz will bring us up to speed on the Joint Working Group on Issues and Awareness, which we uh, work on with the SAA, with NAGARA, and the Regional uh, Archival com Community. Um, nominating Committee to help replenish our officers and uh, our leaders. The Awards Committee, COSID makes a lot of awards, both to help develop uh, those who are coming along in the profession and to recognize those who have contributed so much. Siri is a cornerstone of what we do. We'll hear a little bit more about Siri. And then we'll uh, wrap up our presentations by talking about the 2021 meetings uh, that COSA will, will have. Um, so coming down the line, I'm going to speak. I'll turn it over to Jamie Awalt, our treasurer. Lizette Pelletier is going to talk uh, about development. Sean Rounds, the Chair of Education and Training, uh, will speak. Steve Murray is going to talk about advocacy. Sarah Kuntz will update us on the Joint Working Group. Eric Emerson, uh, the, our current Vice President, incoming President, um, will talk about the Nominating Committee. Jody Foley about the awards. Alan Ramsey and Alejandra Dean uh, will talk about Siri and bring us all up to date there. And then Barbara, our Executive Director, We'll wrap things up and talk about what's going to happen in terms of meetings in 2021. So just to keep things moving, um, 2021 presented, presents us with great opportunities and continued challenges. We all know the, fate, the challenges we're going to face as we deal with the economic impact of the pandemic and the pandemic that continues to go on. Uh, we did a great job this past year of working together to share information, to share experiences, and to be mutually supportive of one another. Uh, members working together is what makes COSA so incredibly strong. And if we learn nothing from this past year, we learned that together we are stronger because we can help each other out, help come up with new solutions, help each other recognize that what we're doing is the right thing to do, and share new ideas with one another to help our own institutions do better and to help COSA as an organization do better across the country. We can't do that without members, without you, without board members, committee chairs, the, our great staff and contractors, um, as well as our corporate sponsors and others uh, who help support the work that we do and help make COSA as impactful as it is and help all of us do a great job for the citizens that we serve. Over 50 individuals volunteer on COSA committees, 50 of us. There's room for 50 more. I recently sent out a note to everybody on the COSA listserv suggesting that there's an opportunity for you to lend your shoulder to the wheel of the Council of State Archivists and lend your shoulder to the wheel of helping all state archives thrive. I hope that you'll seriously consider volunteering for some role within COSA in 2021 or 2022. It's not a heavy lift and the benefits far outweigh the costs. We've implemented and we're hopefully going to complete implementation of a new website and member communication site this coming year. We started this process in 2020, 2020 and we'll wrap it up in 2021. It's a much more robust platform. Uh, it uses higher logic. 
Uh, <laughs> that's the, both the name, but also the concept. Uh, it's a great resource, a great tool that gives us much more power in terms of communicating and working with one another. COSA is a national organization. We are connect all across this country. Uh, having a technology platform that's robust, that's easily easy to use, that stores all of our information and facilitates the kind of collaboration that we do every day is really important and critical. And this higher logic platform is going to give us that. So by the end of this year, you'll see a much more robust, excellent, useful platform for you to interact with your colleagues and to help you become a better state archivist and better member of a state archives organization. We'll continue to have a robust schedule of webinars. Uh, training is a centerpiece of what we do. There's a webinar that COSA offers every month. We've got great partnerships with our corporate sponsors and with the National Archives and with our allied organizations to help us develop much better and stronger uh, skills among all of us and all of the folks that we work with. Uh, so look forward to those great webinars that we'll continue to offer. Um, we continue to do research and learning about how to address especially the challenges presented by records in digital format. And of course, there's always discussion. That's how we learn from one another. We talk, we share, we interact. Uh, so COSA will be there to continue to do that. And we look forward to you being able to participate with us as we do that. That's a big piece of what your COSA dues go to support, helping you deliver a better state archival program because you don't have to do it alone. You've got many others who are going to work with you to help you make that happen. We all completed the Archives and Records Management Survey or the ARM survey earlier this year. We redesigned it. Hopefully it was easier for you and uh, hopefully it'll give you the kind of information you need to advocate for your program to measure its progress and to figure out where you want to go next. Uh, we hope that survey to be published, or actually not hope, that survey will be published earlier uh, in this spring or later in this spring. Uh, we're we're going to hear from Veronica Martzel at some point later uh, this afternoon, but that survey it provides a huge amount of information that's useful to all of us, and we're really grateful to all of you for participating, and we're really grateful to Veronica and all the folks on that volunteer group who helped craft that survey that hopefully is going to be useful to all of us. You know that we are a membership organization, and all of us that are trying to volunteer and help keep this organization moving uh, depend on you. So please contact me, contact any board member or Barbara with any idea, concern, issue you have, or something that COSA can do for you, or something that you think that COSA should have done for you that you'd like COSA to do for you. So uh, a couple of things that uh, uh, you're going to hear about, and Barbara will talk a little bit more about this later, but this year, 2021, all of our meetings will be online. Um, and so uh, we're going to be doing this virtually just like we did last year. Uh, last year, we figured it out. This year, we know what we're doing. These meetings will have been really fantastic. And I think we're going to have even better interactions this year with these online meetings. So I look forward to seeing all of you there and participating with all of you. 2022 is a big question mark. We're trying to figure out what's going to happen. What's the world going to look like in 2022? Um, if anybody knows that, it would be great if you put that in the chat so we all knew. Uh, share that knowledge. You know, Share that your access to your crystal ball. Um, one other thing that's happened this past year is we went to online meetings. Uh, your COSA dues that normally support travel to meetings now are supporting participation in these online meetings. I think every single dues-paying member receives some level of benefit to support as many staff as were allowed under the, the sort of the financing cap to participate in a wide variety of online meetings. So we're going to be doing that again in 2021. Again, your dues are helping you develop your staff, develop all of our skills, and develop the experience and the resources and the value of State Archives. So please take advantage of those training funds that really come back to you after you make your dues payment. And then lastly, for this coming year, we're going to begin the process of the strategic plan for COSA and for Siri to chart our path for the next five years. 
all of us have a responsibility to help this organization meet all of our needs and be relevant and useful to state archives and to all of the folks that work there and to the states that we serve and the people that we ultimately serve. So please, we'll probably be doing some surveys and some outreach and trying to gather data on where COSA should be headed for the next five years. Please pay attention to that and please don't hesitate to participate. So I'm gonna stop talking now because I've already talked too much. I think I've exceeded my allotted time. Um, and I want to turn it over to my colleague, Jamie Ewalt, who's going to talk a bit about our finances. Jamie. Great. Thank you, Tom. Hi, everybody. I'm Jamie Ewalt, the Assistant State Archivist for Tennessee, and I am COSA's Secretary and Treasurer. So let's just jump right into the finances. So it'll come as absolutely no surprise to anyone. The pandemic made an impact on COSA's finances. Overall, let me just say positively that we are in sound financial shape. That's the good news. However, our revenue was down significantly, and that's due to a cancellation of the annual meeting and fewer dues payments that we received um, from states. 46 of the 56 states, territories, and District of Columbia paid dues this past year for a total of $122,500. That was down from the 50 states that paid um, a little over $135,000 in 2019. As the joint SAA and COSA annual meeting was moved to a virtual event, as Tom said, COSA was able to shift and cover the registrations for 250 state archive staff. This is for states that paid their base dues amount. State archive staff were able to attend the conference. So I think that's a pretty great, great number, um, certainly reaching many more state archive staff than perhaps we would have reached in an in-person meeting. So trying to find a little bright side, perhaps. So on a good note, our reserve fund, awards fund, and other investments made gains this past year. We saw a big boost in the receipt of a National Endowment for Humanities CARES grant in the amount of $41,000. This, along with some generous corporate sponsors, helped us with our shortfalls, and, and we're used to cover some administrative costs and other uh, shortfalls. Finally, Tom mentioned the uh, implementation of the Higher Logic web and communication software. We were able to purchase that using 2019 carry forward funds. So it's good to have that. Uh, Lisa, do you want to change the slide for me? So let's look forward to this year. We are still expecting some continued financial changes, obviously with a slight reduction in revenue. Again, no annual meeting. Um, anticipating some base dues will, will come down a little bit this year. Uh, but overall, states, again, that pay their dues amount, we're going to reimburse training that's approved by the COSA board. And I think a list of offerings is forthcoming. So the benefit still will continue to find ways to uh, bring state archivists together and um, do some information and, and sharing and some learning through the payment of dues. So hot off the presses, that last bullet point can change from possible grant to a solid grant award. Uh, we just learned that we were awarded a sub-grant through the University of Illinois from the Andrew Mellon Foundation. So this is a two-year, $100,000 grant. There's going to be more information on the details of the project and from the grant that'll come from the Siri report a little bit later in this webinar. So that is the end of the, yes, it is great news, Steve. <laughs> Very good news. Um, and this comes from some really hard work, I have to say, in termination on um, Barbara's and others' uh, work. So it's, it's, a, it's really great news to start the year with. So I think that's about it that I have. Um, I'll pass it over to Lizette Pelletier, who's chair of the Development Committee, and she'll talk about what's up next. Got to remember to unmute these days. 
Um, yes. Yeah, so on behalf of Steve Excel, who is my co-chair, um, I would just like to um, thank everybody who, who paid their dues this year or were able to pay their dues this year. Um, yes, as Jamie noted, the pandemic um, uh, economic downturn um, forced some states to pass on making dues payments or reduce the amount. Um, dues notices went out recently. Um, we hope that you can um, return those as soon as possible. Um, included uh, with those mailings was information on the benefits of membership um, to help you uh, make your case for paying your dues to COSA. Uh, we did very well with the annual appeals this year. Uh, we had expected that donations uh, would be down due to the economy as well. Uh, we have a spring appeal and then the annual appeal in the fall. Uh, so thank you to everyone who made, donated, especially retired territorial archivist Susan Lugo from the U.S. Virgin Islands, um, who made a very generous gift, and that allowed us to exceed our goal for this year. Uh, the Development Committee is confident that we will reach our $7,000 goal again this year. And we've started planning for the May Appeal, which focuses on the Disaster Response Fund. And members will be hearing more about this in the near future. Corporate memberships have been mixed this year. Uh, in 2020, our paid sponsors grew to eight. We also have one um, consistent newsletter advertiser. We solicited an additional eight companies for sponsorships or newsletter advertising, but were unsuccessful. Uh, we were able to increase sponsorship sponsorship amounts from Preservica and Atlas Systems. We added AVP as a new sponsor, as well as the Northeast Documents Conservation Center. Uh, we continue our positive relationship with Gaylord Archival, uh, which in the past has helped uh, with in-kind gifts and in disaster response situations. And unfortunately, we lost Libnova as a sponsor in 2020, but we're working to bring them back on board for 2021, if at all possible. Um, so it's been a mixed bag, but I, uh, we've been doing well, and that's wonderful to hear about the grant that Jamie just announced. So I will be passing it on to Sean Rounds, and she's going to be talking about the Education and Training Committee. All right, okay, there I am. All right, um, well, hello everyone. I'm Sean Rounds, I'm the State Archivist of Minnesota, and I co-chair the Education Committee with Kathy Popovich from Illinois. Um, by way of introduction, the uh, COSA Education Committee is charged with developing and delivering programs, activities, and communications that not only support COSA's priorities, but also the needs of members and their staff. Now, since the beginning of the pandemic, um, the committee has been very cognizant of the unique pressures and stresses and changes um, that our, our, our uh, state archives communities have been feeling. And, um, you know, there's so much that we are all experiencing, um, including remote work and the challenges with that, uh, budget cuts, staff furloughs, layoffs, and the list just goes on and on. So with that in mind, um, the committee has chosen the theme of adaptable archives for 2021, and you're going to see this reflected in uh, in the various offerings that we have coming up this year, including our web member webinars. Um, the committee is really starting to dig into ideas for topics and speakers around this theme, so do watch for more to come. Um, I will let you know, though, that the topic for March is going to be advocacy. So we've already got one lined up, and we're looking for more. Um, Along with the member webinars, we're going to be continuing our, our very successful Shop Talk series uh, with our corporate sponsors. And um, the COSA NARA webinars, NARA is a, is a good partner to us as an organization. And so we look forward to these, uh, to these joint sessions, which happen quarterly. The next one is scheduled for February on the topic of administrative transitions. And I'll just leave that one there for now. Um, the Education Committee, oh, yeah, perfect. The Education Committee also coordinates COSA's various communication channels. Um, the biggest change that we've seen so far uh, has been the transition from our old listserv to our new group communication software, and that's been a big deal. 
uh, if you, like me, have, have welcomed that change, um, it's a lot easier to to see what's going on in the in the communication, to respond, um, and to track all of that. And I do have to give, I think, a big shout out to Barbara T for shepherding that along so well. Uh, Tom mentioned the new website that's in the works, and we're all very excited to see that. Um, that's going to launch this year, and uh, it's going to make COSA's online present even stronger than it currently is. And we've got a good website now, I think. Um, but it's going to be even better, and, and I'm excited to see what's going to be happening with that, as I'm sure you will be as well. Um, and then, of course, we have our other communications tools. Um, we're on social media. We're on Twitter and Facebook, and I hope that you're you're keeping track of what we post there. And then we also do the monthly news brief, which has over a 1,000 subscribers, and um, that's a great way for us to spread the word. So um, those are just a few of the things that we do for communications. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. Um, the last thing that I'll, I want to mention specifically is um, our more unstructured offerings. Um, if you have participated in any of our past chatting with COSA sessions, you're going to be pleased to know that we're, we're going to have more of those coming up this year. Um, if you have ideas or topics um, or would like to help out, please do contact either me or Barbara about that. We would love that. Um, those are uh, such valuable opportunities to learn from one another and um, to share information about what we're doing. Uh, likewise, we're going to be continuing our COSA on demand calls. Uh, the next one is scheduled for February 2nd with David Johns hosting the discussion around attorney client privilege in state government records. So um, these are great ways, like I said, to, to uh, you know, ask questions of, of colleagues around the country um, to learn from one another, uh, to know that you're not alone in the challenges that we're facing. And last but not least, um, we have our In Conversation With series. And um, these are these were funded last year by COSA's NEH CARES grant, uh, of which we are, are very appreciative. And this coming year, it's going to be supported by Atlas Systems. So that's a really great great way for our sponsor to, to support our, our um, activities. These are recorded conversations between Ann Ackerson and various subject experts on timely uh, topics like um, working with indigenous communities, uh, adjusting operations during the pandemic, and, and also uh, cultural competency. So there's a range of, of topics. Uh, these recordings are available through the COSA website and on YouTube. And I really want to underscore what a terrific resource this is uh, for staff development. I should also mention that our webinars, including this one, is being uh, recorded and are also available on the website. So do encourage your staff to, to check those out. Um, the next um, conversation is going to feature Robert Christman from Virginia talking about AI. And finally, uh, if all of this has made you excited about uh, about the Education Committee, please let me or Barbara know. We would love to welcome new members. And so with that, uh, I want to thank you for your time and attention, and I will pass the baton to Steve Murray, who's going to talk to us about the Advocacy Committee. Thank you, Sean. It's good to be with all of you today, and I'm very pleased to co-chair the Advocacy Committee with Jody Foley and to serve with a great group of people from around the COSA community. Uh, anytime we have a start of a new Congress or a new presidential administration, there's always a, um, an intensive period of giving a, taking a new look at the landscape and trying to determine where our the federal agencies in which we have interest and other uh, organizations related to archival institutions stand, and that's happening currently in the work of the Advocacy Committee. There's always lots of monitoring of what's happening, uh, and we focus certainly on the NHPRC, uh, whose budget in the current year is still standing at $6.5 million, uh, and COSA works with partners, including NARA and others, to always try to advocate for, for improvement there. Uh, we're also a supporter of NARA's uh, standing in the budget. Uh, it has had a bit of an up and down in recent years with some increases coming that you may see in summary reports of federal appropriations. But it's always important to understand the, the fine print on those. Uh, often in recent years, the increases have come with as earmarks for specific initiatives that are short term, including most recently the, the presidential transition. So we're always looking to see better 
overall capacity growth uh, in NARA, uh, which helps to lead to better prospects for collaboration with, with our organizations at the state level. We also have uh, routinely monitored the prospect of NHPRC reauthorization, even though NHPRC is funded year to year currently. It's, uh, it's, uh, it has not been reauthorized technically by Congress, uh, and, and um, we're hoping to see a better chance for that in the cha recent changes in Congress, but keep an eye on those developments as well as at IMLS and NEH, which have fared a little bit better in the last uh, couple of years in the federal budgets. We always hope to see better uh, funding possibilities there. And in addition to advocating on behalf of those agencies, we want to advocate to them to encourage them to continue looking for granting programs that can better serve archival institutions and, and reference projects specifically. Uh, looking more at the state and local uh, arena, uh, the advocacy committee is always interested in being sure that we're thinking about ways that we can support you in your efforts to uh, advocate for your programs to look to state executive branch government and also to uh, your state legislatures. Uh, I think most recently what we've seen in terms of some increased activity has been a look at some local issues that have developed during the pandemic. Uh, and working and in, in being in a more uh, constant conversation with some of our colleagues at SAA, including its Committee on Public Policy and the Public Library Archive section, uh, COSA had an opportunity through a partnership with an organization called Every Library, which advocates nationally for uh, library systems, to, um, to, to lend a voice to a local issue in my state, in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, last year, and that has led to discussions with SAA about building some increased, uh, building out the toolkit for advocacy at the local level, and we're excited about some opportunities that will be coming out later this year. Uh, that is also going to be one of the subjects of the March webinar uh, offering that Sean mentioned. We hope that you'll look forward to a discussion about uh, advocacy in, in March. We also, a very important part of what COSA contributes in this area is in the way of collaboration with other organizations. And Sarah is going to talk more in a minute about, I think one of the most important of those is our partnership with the Joint Working Group on Issues and Awareness. I won't say more about that, but just to know that uh, reports from that group to the Advocacy Committee are a regular part of our agenda and we're always maintaining close lines of communication with our, our partner groups there. Uh, we also have more of a role uh, recently in the National Coalition for History, now that COSA has joined the policy board of that uh, partnership organization, and Barbara represents us very well in those discussions. This is a very high-level uh, conversation that's happening with groups like the American Historical Association, um, and other large national groups in, in D.C. They have a per full-time permanent presence in, in Washington, D.C., and it uh, really offers a good direct line to what's happening on the Hill. We want to point out some opportunities for you and your staff this year. Given that everything is happening online, there's a real downside to that in terms of the lack of personal uh, interaction, but it also brings opportunities to involve more of your staff in advocacy work. We want to be sure you're aware of the National Humanities Alliance Advocacy Day, which is March 8th through 11th. I'll put these links in the chat uh, after I finish. And then also the uh, American Alliance of Museums Advocacy Day, which will be February 22nd through the 23rd. COSA, uh, through Barbara, has been working increasingly closely with the National Humanities Alliance, and they have become real supporters of archival interests uh, in our issues specifically. But both of those groups offer great uh, opportunities for your for your uh, program managers and staff to get some good advocacy experience. We are also in conversations and monitoring the work of the American Association for State and Local History on the America 250th anniversary coming up in 2026. And we'll be bringing you more information about that and how we might link awareness and advocacy to that anniversary for state archives programs later in 2021. So we hope you'll stay tuned to those efforts and uh, uh, other other lines of uh, information coming to you from the advocacy committee. With that, I will hand it over to Sarah Kuntz. Okay, thank you, Steve. 
So I'm going to share a little bit about the uh, Joint Working Group for Issues and Awareness and our role in that. Um, so just as a reminder, I believe Tom mentioned this at the top of the webinar, but the membership of the Joint Working Group is composed of COSA, uh, NAGARA has representatives, RAC, which stands for the Regional Archival Association Consortium. Uh, SAA has two sets of members on there, and that includes um, members from their COP committee, Committee on Pol Public Policy, and the Committee on Public Awareness. So they're both represented in the joint working group. And just to give you a little bit about uh, recent activities with the group, um, one of the first things that we've been tackling was the, the governance of the group. Uh, for many years, it's been led by by the able leadership of, of Jim Corridan, but we didn't really have a structure in terms of uh, membership because sometimes we had overlap with some members from some associations staying a long time. Others were rotating as committee chairs rotated. So we, we took a stab at creating a more structured governance in terms of also rotating the leadership and the administration of the group. Uh, so that was completed in, in 2020. And then um, after a surprisingly uh, successful election without uh, any any trouble or <laughs> any recounts, uh, I, I accepted the nomination to steer the group for the next year and then we'll rotate to another one of the members. So Barbara's been assisting with the administration of that group and then we'll pass it off to another member um, this summer. Uh, the other thing that we did with the governance document was expand the ex officio membership. So that allowed um, the group a latitude to suggest folks that might be important contributors to our, our conversations on advocacy and issues in the archives world. And so for this uh, term, we've expanded our ex officio membership to include uh, Brian Watledge, who is the vice president of COP. He also works with SAA um, on with the National Humanities Alliance. So he's been a nice add. And then we've also picked up uh, Justin De La Cruz of the American Library Association. And he's active in their advocacy committee. So we felt like that was an important connection to make there as well so that we can broaden our reach on, on uh, advocacy and awareness issues. So then uh, after our governance document was completed and, and the election was underway, we turned our attention to working on transition uh, materials. And that was going to be irregardless of who won the election. We were going to figure out um, what we wanted to say in terms of transition um, messaging. And so that started with a written document that we crafted uh, as a group and ran by all of our member organs, uh, the, the partners in, in the joint working group. And that highlighted some issues that were important across all of our communities uh, on a broad range of topics from declassification to copyright to federal funding for humanities programs to adequate support for NARA. Uh, and all those things, and so we, we jointly agreed on, on language that we could use um, in, in that written document. And then by that time, the election was over, and we had passed it on to the Biden transition team. And we're very pleased that we were able to have an in-person conversation with a member of that transition team who was working specifically on humanities issues. And so she had a, a meeting with all of the members of the joint working group, and then um, some of the leadership from each of the membership groups um, were able to participate. And that was a very successful conversation. The uh, lady that we dealt with had worked uh, for many years in um, NEH, I believe. She was an executive in NEH. So she was very versed in humanities funding and the importance of, of those grant programs. So we had a, a great conversation with her. And then on deck, we're working on things, of course, like uh, advocacy toolkits, uh, webinars, and then we always leave room for joint statements and issue briefs that the group can discuss collectively. And those come up in a couple of different ways. They might be in um, relation to a time-sensitive uh, news story, or they can also be something like coming from one of our member groups um, that they just want to create sort of a position paper or a statement on a topic. So currently, for example, SAA um, COP has produced uh, a joint statement on what they feel is the need for federal legislation around judicial records, and then that can be sent to all the member organizations for their review. And typically when that's done with COSA, we take that to the Advocacy Committee and um, the Executive Committee for their review and, and suggestions on um, whether or not that statement is an appropriate thing for us to participate in or not. So this, is, this has been, a, as Steve mentioned, a really great group, um, very important group, allows us to work on some of the same advocacy issues that he highlighted with a larger community, uh, both at the federal 
and the state and local level. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to the other Carolina for um, his update. Thank you, Chair. I'm Eric Emerson, COSA Vice President. It's my pleasure to chair this year's nominating committee. The nominating committee is responsible for selecting nominees for COSA's board of directors. And I'd like to thank my fellow committee members, Dave Jones of Illinois, and John Dugan of Missouri, of Missouri for agreeing to serve on the committee. Uh, the nominating committee will select nominees for three openings on the board when we begin our work next week. As Tom noted during his opening remarks, and as people have said, in their presentations, please let us know if you're interested in serving on the board or on any COSA committees. And we're always grateful for the efforts of those who volunteer their time on behalf of COSA. So that concludes my very brief report. So next, I'll turn it over to Alan Ramsey and Alejandro Dean for a presentation by the Siri Committee. Great, thanks, Eric. Um, so Alan and I will be providing an update on the State Electronic Records Initiative or Siri and outlining what Siri has planned for 2021. So first up, um, I'll provide an update on the Modeling Viable Electronic Information Transfers or Move It project, uh, which is in its final stages of being wrapped up. So this project is coordinated by Michelle Gallinger, it's managed by Nick Canizzo, and it's supported by Preservica and AVP. And just a quick overview, it's a research project to identify and determine common characteristics between successful electronic records transfers in state government. Um, so the update uh, is that the final report has been completed and it's forthcoming on the project website. And it summarizes the seven model projects in state archives that were featured in the Move It project and also goes over the methodology and findings of the project. Um, a number of best practices documents have also come out of the project, and they're already up online on the project website, so you can check those out. Um, lastly, an update for Move It, uh, February's Siri webinar, um, the topic is the Move It project, and it has a very clever title. It's Move It or Lose It, um, in which Nick will be going over the project and its results. So that webinar is scheduled for Tuesday, February 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And if you haven't already registered for it, you can do so on the Siri webinars page. So next, um, an update on the Siri video series. Um, this video series is still in progress and all three Siri subcommittees are currently working together to finish the remaining videos in the series. Um, this was started last year, and it covers 12 short videos on topics related to managing, preserving, and making accessible electronic records. So you can check out what's already been published on COSA's YouTube channel, and stay tuned for the final installments that are coming out later this year. And then before we move on to uh, updates on the three series subcommittees, um, I'll just mention the grant that Jamie uh, mentioned earlier in the webinar, um, which is that COSA is the recipient of a two-year $100,000 Andrew W. Mellon Foundation grant um, administered by the University of Illinois through their email archives, building capacity and community program. So COSA's grant project is entitled Prepare, Preparing Archives for Records and Email. And it will accomplish a number of different things. Um, it's going to distribute a needs assessment survey to state archives on their capacity for taking in and managing permanent records and email. It will uh, develop best practices documents. It will provide mentorship opportunities to state archives. And it will also conduct and report out on uh, tools testing for processing records and email. So uh, we all have a lot to look forward to in the next few years for COSA Prepare. Um, okay, so on to what the three uh, series subcommittees will be up to this year. So Tools and Resources has three main activities planned for 2021. The first is collaborating with the other subcommittees to finalize the last few videos in the Siri video series that I already mentioned. Um, the second activity is, um, is a big one. It's to continue providing oversight of the COSA Resource Center. And that includes things like 
uh, refreshing and updating resources, um, analyzing metrics from the resource center, and continuing to add new resources to the portal. But notably this year, Tools and Resources is exploring a partnership with the Society of American Archivists Electronic Records section to develop a co-governance model for the Resource Center. So this is an exciting opportunity to uh, broaden the audience of this valuable resource and to get some further input and perspective on submissions of resources on electronic records topics. Um, and then relatedly, Tools and Resources is also providing support for the migration of the Resource Center to COSA's new website um, that's powered by Higher Logic. And then finally, uh, Tools, and Resource, Tools and Resources will, as always, um, continue to collaborate and coordinate with the other series subcommittees. Um, and specifically this year, in support of Electronic Records Day 2021, and also to explore resources for the topic of coding and scripting and archiving. And the co-chairs for Tools and Resources are Nick Knizzo and Suzanne Stachulatis. So with that, I'll turn it over to Alan. Thank you, Alejandra. This is Alan Ramsey. I'm gonna talk about the uh, Education and Programming Committee, so what they're going to be looking at this year. Um, as always, the Siri webinars, which um, as we mentioned, one already coming up for the Move It or Lose It project, so please uh, register for that. Um, and there will be other um, webinars coming out. I think the um, if you look at the Siri webinar page, um, you can see where all the um, webinars for the first half of this year were coming soon, so do check that out. Um, as Alejandra mentioned, um, in relation to the video series, education and programming also does um, timely and um, of interest educational videos. And so they're finalizing scripts and slides as well for the video series to get that wrapped up. Um, and then developing and recording on-demand videos on various electronic records topics. So stay tuned for those. Um, and then another uh, another area that's of focus and collaboration is an initiative to provide support to furloughed or laid off archives workers, state archives workers. And so this is a collaboration with the Education and Training Committee. Um, we're looking at some webinars and potentially some other um, opportunities and, and ways that we can support um, archives workers um, to, with professional development, such as, you know, maybe writing scripts for videos or um, resume help or, or those sorts of things. So stay tuned for more on that. That's being um, worked on as we speak. Um, and then, uh, as Alejandra mentioned, mentioned um, support for Archivist of Code. So um, there should be a survey going out shortly if it hasn't gone out. Um, and analysis after that to see if there's interest and um, which we believe there is for archivists who code and sort of forming an affinity group, which would be one of the, which would be the first for Siri and COSA in, in, in general. And then, you know, collaborating uh, to explore um, resources and provide additional support for the resource center. And the chair, co-chairs are Bonnie Weddle of New York and Catherine Beringer of Maryland. Uh, next slide, please. And then, Advocacy and Outreach Subcommittee, uh, they had a successful 2020 Electronic Records Day. Uh, check out the poster and the webinar. Um, and we are beginning planning shortly for Electronic Records Day 2021. Um, and then uh, again, support, uh, then um, they're working on the series social media presence, Twitter and Facebook posts and things of that nature. They're also developing and, public, and hopefully um, developing at the moment and will hopefully publish a uh, Siri advocacy um, op-ed, um, and then again, collaborating with other subcommittees to uh, support the video series. Um, the advocacy outreach did a really good um, work on putting together some videos, of the same as the other subcommittees did, um, webinars uh, like the Electronic Records Day webinar, and uh, website content such as repurposing or re-looking at blog posts that have been done in the past, or other kinds of content to um, raise awareness about um, electronic records issues. Um, Co-chairs of the subcommittee are Christian Skipper from Maryland and Patsy Mitchell from Tennessee. And I will now pass it to Veronica to tell us all about the ARM survey report. Thank you so much, Helen. Um, first of all, I wanna go ahead and thank everyone who participated in the FY 2020 survey. 
As Tom mentioned at the beginning, this survey um, was approached a little bit differently than previous ones. We went ahead and broke it up into hopefully a little bit smaller, more manageable um, mini surveys for you. Um, initially, I just wanted to give you some high level um, response rates. I'm very pleased to report that of the 56 um, potential respondents in either joint archives and records management programs or archives only, um, we had 40 states and three territories which completed all of the surveys. Um, actually a total of six potential surveys because survey two was broken into two pieces. In addition to that, uh, another eight states and one territory completed somewhere between um, one and five surveys. Most of the people, in, most of the states and archives in that group um, were closer to the five than the one, um, maybe just skipping one that um, they didn't have as much interest or um, information to contribute to. Um, but where I'm really excited to be able to report is that for those states that also have a separate records management program, um, we were able to get responses from six of those programs this year. Uh, analysis is underway. Um, first draft is due next week, so uh, you all know what I'll be doing this weekend. Um, the goal, and which will be done, is to have the report available and published in time for the COSA BPE conference in May, where I'll be able to bring you more detailed information on the results. Um, I will just say that I think one of the great benefits of this report, um, and that I really appreciate that you participating in it, is that it gives us a really strong longitudinal set of data. Um, we're going to have, I think, some really interesting placement of the data of this report between where we were in FY 2016, where we were just, you know, coming into a place of strength again, recovering from uh, the 2008 recession. Um, and now we're going to see in this report some of those immediate impacts to some of our matrices, like in-person reference. Um, that are going to take a big hit in this report, but then it's really going to be in the FY 2022 report where we're going to see, again, some of those bigger long-term impacts um, around things like staffing and budgets. Um, so, again, just thank you and much more to come. And I will pass it, I believe it goes to Barbara now. Yes, thank you, Veronica. And I would just like to echo something that uh, Sean typed into the chat. We really appreciate the work that you've done on the survey this year, too. I think it's going to be one of our, you know, better surveys because we're going to, um, we've had a good response rate, and then we also really look specifically at each question to make sure that we actually needed that information. So thank you so much. Um, I just had a couple of things I was going to cover. One is, uh, COSA Awards Program, Jody Foley, the immediate past president, is the chair of the awards committee, but she couldn't be here today. But she did want me to share this slide with you um, also, just so you would be aware that we're going to be sending out the notice for the COSA Awards Program nominations here within the next week or so. And we will have another online awards program like we did last year that was run so successfully with Family Search, where we were able to film in each of the archives with the recipients of the award. So we hope that you'll look for that in your mailbox and consider nominating someone for these awards. We do have an announcement about the COSA Ancestry Leadership Award. It's on a little bit uh, different schedule than the rest of the awards. And Catherine Berenger from Maryland was just selected as the 2021 COSA Ancestry Leadership Award recipient. So congratulations to her. She's a, a very worthy recipient, and we look forward to hearing from her at the annual meeting. Next slide, please. Thank you. Speaking of meetings, we have so many opportunities for meetings this year. Um, COSA will hold an annual briefing for our partners, as we always do, usually at a mid-year meeting in D.C., where we're able to meet with the Archivist of the United States and some other folks in NARA, 
Dan Stokes from NHPRC and Meg Phillips, and you know we meet with some of us go meet with our congressional representatives too. But we won't be doing that this year. <laughs> We're going to just be holding a regular uh, informational briefing for our partners on March 18th um, on online. So uh, COSA members are also welcome to come to that, and we'll be sending out a save the date and in the next week or so. Everything's happening in the next couple of weeks, according to me. Um, we also, I know you have received notice about the COSA BPE conference, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more specifically in the next slide, I think. But be sure and have that on your calendar, and we'll be sending you more information about that. Um, since we wanted to keep our regular work session and business meeting on the same schedule that we've been having, you know, like an August, July uh, time frame for our annual meeting and work session, we're going to be having an online work session a week before we have the online business meeting in August. Um, so we'll, I think we've been sending information about that, so you should have that on your calendar. But if you don't, be sure and mark that down. Obviously, it's not going to be all day. I think it's in the afternoon to help accommodate some of our people on uh, Pacific and Hawaii and Alaska time and further out. Um, so we'll we'll make sure that you hear a lot about that before August. And next slide, please. Just um, a reminder that the best practices exchange deadline for pro program proposals has been extended. Uh, this is going to be a really good conference. Uh, actually, um, Ken Williams and his staff in Utah are hosting this in Salt Lake City. Obviously, we're not going to be in Salt Lake City, but um, <laughs> they're doing such a great job and have decided that uh, we're not going to charge a registration fee for this conference. So. It's open to whoever wants to attend, so we hope that you and your staff will register for this, but also it's a really great venue to exchange information about particular projects, and you don't really, the way BPE works, you don't have to have a full-blown proposal with 20, you know, six speakers and everything lined out. If you have an idea, just share it with the committee and they'll pair you with someone so that, you know, like for an hour that you may talk about your digital preservation project and another state may do that, but it doesn't really have to be as coordinated or formal, I think, as we're used to doing with some of our other program partners, so if you have an idea, be sure and send it in there. Um, and I just wanted to also mention that we have, several people had mentioned the Higher Logic discussion group. We have the discussion group set up for state archivists, and we're going to be working on migrating our previous uh, listservs for the Siri list and for the State Archives Network, which was anybody who wanted to receive anything from COSA, um, just informational bulletins. But, and we're also going to start one for State Archives staff. And we have several different, you know, we can start discussion groups on anything you're interested in discussing. So if you're interested in making sure that you get signed up, please just send me your email address and we'll, we're working on populating all of that. Uh, all of the databases that run behind the higher logic discussion groups um, in the next in the next week or two. No, <laughs> really over the next couple of months, we're going to get that operation ongoing. Um, we also are going to be sending out to the state archivist, Dan Stokes from NHPRC was kind enough to send us sort of an update written report of what's going on with NHPRC and the state grant program. So we're going to be sending that out to you too. And before I turn this back over to um, Tom, I just wanted to really thank everyone for all your contributions to COSA and all the things that you do to make this such an active and innovative organization, and we appreciate your support and participation. Now I think I'm going to turn it over to Tom for the Q&A period. So that's where we're at. Q&A, what a huge amount of information and activity and energy. So thank you to all of my colleagues and thank you to all of you. Um, I, if we don't have questions, we can just talk about the weather. Uh, 
Uh, but um, are there any any questions from anyone? You can either uh, I think you've got to submit them through the chat um, or actually through the Q and A down here. It's always a sign of an excellent presentation when there are no questions because we've answered all of them. Um, Tom, this is Barbara. I was going to interrupt you again just to. I wanted to remind everyone we sent out a list of all of the training opportunities that are available that COSA can reimburse for your base dues amount since there's not a registration fee for the annual meeting. So if you didn't get that, be sure and get in touch with me. Thank you for that reminder, Barbara. And if anyone has a longer question to ask, we could actually unmute you if you don't want to put it in the chat. Just let <laughs> us know. And if you have a question, yep, go oh, ahead. Oh, Tom, it's Veronica. Um, I was curious, since the conference is a joint BPE-COSA conference, is there any I haven't looked at it closely. Is there any restrictions on the types of programming? Do they need to be more BPE digital focused or is it any sort of potential session? Yeah, I think it's any potential session because in addition to like there's a BPE track and if something doesn't fit within that, and COSA wants to host it as part of that, we can do that too. So if you have something that's not at all related to the regular BPE themes, that's fine. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, uh, I do have one uh, just request. Um, Steve Murray has been leading the consortium of folks who are working with From the Page. And I'm wondering if Steve can give us a quick update on that sort of consortial work and the work with From the Page. Steve, are you available? Yes, th thank you, Tom. And I uh, want to thank uh, COSA. This is an, another important role that COSA is playing uh, as a facilitator in, finan in, a fiscal, in a fiscal role for our interstate partnership to continue developing the From the Page crowdsourcing platform. Uh, many of you know there was an initial phase of development in 2018, and um, we have gone back to Brumfield Labs to further enhance that software this year over a project that will run all the way through 2021. And uh, I want to thank our friends in Florida, Indiana, Maryland, Missouri, North Carolina, and Virginia who have joined us in Alabama in providing financial support for that initiative, which will provide improvements to allow transcription of ledger or spreadsheet style records. Uh, increase, it creates um, a reviewer role and some other quality assurance provisions and also uh, creates a new metadata um, input feature that allows you to do both textual transcription and metadata creation at the same time on the same screen. Uh, so we're very excited about the improvements that this is going to bring to this open source software that's free to those uh, to use if you can download and install it. There are hosting opportunities uh, from Brumfield Labs if you don't want to run that on your own server. And most of us who are using it, I think, are, are using that hosting service. Happy to answer questions offline or subsequent uh, if anyone has them. We are looking for a couple of Supporters who can help us, we've got about a $3,000 gap to close to get us to the full amount for uh, $60,000. So we've got some time to work on that. If you or a friend's organization is interested in, I would say that several of the states who are participating are receiving funding through their friend's organization to support this effort. So we can provide whatever information might be useful to, to, to you in, in making a pitch for that kind of support. Thank you, Tom. Well, thank you, thank you. And, and I definitely thank you for your leadership in, in this particular matter. We have exhausted our, our, hour. So I think our next slide's got some contact information on it. Um, maybe just some re reminders before we get there, sorry. Um, uh, February 9th, uh, so just about a week and a half away, uh, the, the uh, Move It or Lose It 
Um, that should be uh, that information should be in your inboxes already. But if it's not, please definitely try to take advantage of that. I know the folks here in New York are very consistently participating, and they get a lot out of these webinars. Uh, the COSANARA webinar on executive transitions in federal and state government. We all go through it, uh, just like the, the folks at the federal level do. Uh, maybe a little less drama here in uh, great places like Albany. But. And then finally, uh, the February 25th COSA member webinar, the subject to be announced, but you know it's going to be a good one. So uh, definitely put that date on your calendar. So here we go, the COSA website. Uh, it's changing, it's evolving, but it's going to always be that rich resource for all of us, the COSA Resource Center. Um, Follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and definitely that YouTube channel where the Siri uh, programs are going to be, where the programs, the sort of the in-focus programs that we've talked about, and I'm using the wrong name, but you all know what I'm talking about. So visit that YouTube channel. It's totally worthwhile going to. Thank you very much to all of our sponsors and funders. Um, there's some folks here that you all know. Please uh, consider them um, as you are uh, looking at for opportunities to do various things. Um, COSA wouldn't be what it is without these, uh, the support of these organizations, and COSA wouldn't be as great a service to all of you without them. So with that, um, please make sure you fill out the survey uh, as you leave this, uh, this session, and we appreciate your time, your attention, and your commitment to the work that we all do. Have a great afternoon, everyone.